All right, so we're comp 100, and it's week 11, lesson 11, part one. We just started talking about this, the dragon, uh, summit number five, uh, which I kind of went over with you guys. Um, we talked about it last week in detail. I actually have it up on uh, eCentennial now, and I've asked you to go up on, on GitHub, fork me, so I actually click on the fork button here, and then pull it down the zip file, and unzip it, you should see something like this. You double click on the solution, and then it'll bring it up into your into your files like this, right? <laughs> so once you've got here, I want to create a template, right? So I'm gonna, I'm not going to kill the dragon, so to speak. I'm going to make my own template, so I can I can have a starting point where if I make mess up, I can always go back and start again in that same space. But it's not going to mess up my my files. How do I do that? So I'm going to go file. Follow me here. File. Export template. Go to export template. Okay, so you already have the Dragon open here in your Visual Studio, I'm assuming, okay? When you click Export Template, it's going to say, what kind of template do you want? There's Project Template or Item Template. You're going to click Project Template, right? It should say down here, Comp 100 the Dragon. That's what it should say down here right now, right? From which project? Right? Next. Now up here it says the template name, Comp 100 the Dragon. This is good. You can actually put a little description in here. Like this is, you can erase this and say, this is a base... Uh, template boilerplate. All right, let's say this is a boilerplate uh, for um, assignment five, comp one hundred, right? Assignment five. You can put it whatever kind of thing text you want. You can also put it a new icon image to make it look cool and a preview image if you want. Blah blah. And then what you want to click is finish. If you've done everything correctly. You click finish and it says bam and it'll give you this thing comp 100 the dragon dot zip you should see that coming up yeah this part not all these other I have other ones too right but this comp 100 the dragon dot zip is what you should see okay close this off now so close this little window that popped up and now close your solution off close your solution okay now we're going to start a new solution here in, in uh, Visual Studio so we're going to go file new project Okay, instead of clicking where we did before on the Visual C Sharp and then choosing console application, we're not going to do that. We're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And guess what you're going to see? Comp 100, the dragon. That's going to be a new, a new template we just created. You click that, and on the bottom, don't click next. On the bottom, if you notice, right, it says Comp 100, the dragon 1. Well, you don't want that. It's Comp 100, and you're going to make it, you're going to call it Assignment 5, right? That's really what it is. Assignment 5. This is where your starting point is going to be. And this is my assignment 5. I'm going to do assignment 5 with you for a second. So here's assignment 5. You can put assignment dash 5, whatever you want. I'll press OK. And once I do that, I have everything from before. If I go back to my Solution Explorer, I actually have everything from the Dragon. If I go to my program, right? If I go to my program CS file, I got the Dragon is right here. It's everything that I had from before. It's all right here. I didn't touch anything, right? But it's a good starting place. So if I mess this up, I'm not messing up my template, which is the dragon. I'm going to make my own story now. All right. So let's do one level for myself. Now, I'm going to do it. You guys can follow along or you guys can watch. If you follow along, then you won't be using this assignment 5 template to make your assignment. Right. Um, again, if you look at the, the, what the requirements, it says for, for assignment 5, it says use the dragon game console project files provided on GitHub, which is Compound Hunter the Dragon, as your template. Currently, the app only gives the player the choice of going into Cave 1 or Cave 2 or one overall decision level or node. Extend the functionality of the app to include two more decision levels for the player. An example, after going into Cave 1, the player is given the option to turn right or left, second decision level. He chooses left and proceeds to the inner cave. We're going to show you how to do that in a second, where he can choose to fight the dragon or try to convince the dragon to spare his life, which is the third decision level. And I said, write your own story. Use the dragon as a guide. Do not use the dragon as your story. I don't want that. I want you to make your own. All right, it's going to be, this is the challenge for the next couple weeks. All right? So part of it is writing your story and making it fit, fit, fit finally making a little bit of bigger application to make it fit with the, with the piece parts that you already know how to do. Okay, so let's talk, take a look at this. So write your own story. Add two decision levels to the game for a total of eight possible outcomes. If you have anything less than eight outcomes, you'll lose marks. If you have more than one, pos one positive outcome, only one. There's only one chance for the guy to live. 
all other seven choices, other than, other than those, they're all death in some form. Death or, or defeat. Isn't that, if you don't like killing, you know, if that's not for you, and you want to make an interesting story where there's just defeat, that's okay too. Um, only one positive outcome is available, and it says there's a few options here. Option, you may allow the player to go back to the previous node or cross laterally to a node on the same level. In other words, go this way. Like almost like a third choice. Take the tunnel to the right. You know, kind of thing, and then it'll mess them up. It'll make them so it's like a, it's like a little maze. You don't have to make it the way it is right here, right? You can make it as difficult as you want. So if you do this option, if I say option, I give you points. You have to have like three choices or four choices. Careful when you do that, eh? Because it makes your <laughs> it makes your game more even that more complex. Complex, yeah. So um, for node two, you can go up to node five, and then from node five, you can go to node six and the outcome five. You could do that. You can go five to five. You can make a little bridge almost between five and six. It's just your, the way you think, the way you're thinking about it. Right now, in node five, let's say, you would only have two choices, which would be negative outcome three or negative outcome four, right? You wouldn't want that, right? Um, if you want to, and there'd be a third choice to go to node six, but well, you'd call it something else. You'd call it, you know, uh, see that, you know, go over the bridge or something like that, or go under the tunnel or whatever, something else. Yeah. Just a question. So, do we have to have two negative outcomes no matter what? And then you have to have, no matter what, seven out negative outcomes any way you slice it, seven, with three decision levels deep, minimum. Anything else additional to that is up to you, right? You have to have seven. That's, these are the rules. Think about them as business rules. You're building a bigger app, all right? And remember this. We can outthink smaller apps. We can't outthink games. It's impossible. We have to go and actually do it and plan it. Right, so I want you to do a little bit of planning, yeah. You good? Yeah. You have to have at least one path of positive outcomes. There's going to be at least one positive outcome. You don't have to put it here. No, you can put it this way. Well, there's got to be some kind of path to it. Like, the path doesn't have to be like this. It could be this way, right? It could be this way. It could be this way, right? It could be this way. There's got to be a way to get there. There's no way of jumping to it. Like right? I was thinking, like, let's say you go from node 1 to node 2 and then node 5, and then it acts like you go to node 6, but you can go from node 1 to node 2 and node 6 as well. As long as you go to node 6, Oh, I see. Yeah, but that would be, that's why you can make, you can make, like I said, you can make this extra, extra link there, or you can make a link from here to there. But you have to be able to get to node 6 somehow. If that was the, or maybe node seven, you have to somehow make it to node seven, no matter if you do this, this, but in order for you to get there, you at least have to have uh, three decision levels. So you can't do from, you can't go from node two to node seven. No, no, no. Because that would be like cheating, right? Because you can go like, instead of only, instead of making uh, one, two, three choices, all you're going to do is making one, two choices, now you're done, right? No, 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 right? We don't want that. We want one, two, it's always three choices, right? Actually, that still would be legally okay. If you went like for one, two, and then to this, it's still three choices because then you still have to make a choice here, left yeah. or right, right? But if you went from one to seven, bad. Please don't do that. Please don't do like two nodes, two, two nodes down, right? Like that's, that's bad because if you did this, then you only have one, two choices as opposed to one, two, three choices. It's always got to be minimum three choices before you get to outcomes. You can go more than three. You can go one, two, three, four, and then outcomes. You can do that. Right? And you can go back. You can make it so it's a maze. It doesn't have to be like this at all. You can make it so that's one. Maybe instead of two choices, there's three choices. But the more you do, it becomes crazy, right? The choice tree becomes crazy. I'm not making you make an external document here, but I want you to really internally document well. And that's why I'm giving you uh, six marks for internal documentation. So I want you to mark down which, what, what each node is. What's the purpose of the node? Is it a positive or negative outcome? That kind of thing. You need to mark that down with your the six marks, right? And also put your name and all that stuff inside the inside the document. You get bonus marks if, you make it. if yeah, if you make it so more complicated, like I gave you some bonus option. When I say option, it's bonus option. You may allow the player to go back to previous node or cross laterally. Option, which means bonus. You may allow the player to find special items, right, uh, to help him win. So, in other words, even if he goes to node seven. Unless he picked up a sword, uh, uh, the, the special sword at node uh, three, he don't win. He's still gonna die. He's still gonna be killed somewhere. There's been a third uh, kill option. So wouldn't that mean you have to have uh, an option to pick up a sword? So it yeah. says. So it so says here. 
yeah, so have like three things. So you say, um, so you say, okay, choice one, you know, go go to node seven on your own. Choice without picking up the sword. Choice two, pick up the sword, right? Choice three, pick up the shield, right, and go to node node six, you know, whatever, and so on. You can you know, to make this decision. If he picks up the wrong item, right, then he's still gonna die because he doesn't have. You can check to say, does he have the item? If he has the item, he can keep an quote unquote inventory. Which is just a, on the in the class level, it's a global or class level variable that you keep called inventory, which is an array, right? This is why it's more complicated to do. I'm giving you a bonus for that, right? Um, okay, that's one. Let's look at let's look at the third option. Third option is hey, here's a here's an easy bonus one to make it nice for you. Option you may use ASCII artwork to enhance each node. I'll give you a bonus. It's not necessary. I've given you two, but those you're going to change anyway. It's not going to be yours because you're not going to use the dragon you're going to make your own make your own game so use ascii art how do you do that if i go to online we did this last week and i said ascii uh, art generator there's all kinds right and you can go text to ascii art generator like something like this type something like you can actually do words like really cool words like a title as opposed to uh you know if i go to the inner cave right that's what this is art that comes up like that. And you can make it so it's graffiti, you can change different kinds of fonts to Merlin, you know, whatever, to make it really look cool. Your game can look an aw like an awesome game. Yeah. Um, for, the, for using this as an optional uh, decision, do we have to have one uh, outcome, like, like one picture like that for the final outcome, or do we have to have for each, every option? To make your, to make get the bonus, you have to you do it all the time. You have to use your, yeah, every time you use your ASCII art, which means it gives you, it gives you more work to do, right? So you're going to get the bonus, right? Uh, <laughs> right? Uh, character width, if you look at default, right, you can go to uh, fitted, right? You can go to, uh, to sm smush, right, so kind of smush it together. Um, you can also go to... Um, Underline and and then of course there's character height. You can do the same thing so you can smash it smash it down Right So you can kind of crush it as much as possible um, This is just one and this is just for words Right so that you can actually do words here, and then you can actually do art you can just go back a bunch of times This is for like a really cool title right for the inner cave oops um, And that's not the one I want Make your picture into text, right? So take a picture, and then you can convert it by uploading it, and it turns it into a text image. Let me just answer this. My, my, my daughter's calling me for whatever reason. Yes, my love. And And, and I love you, but I'm on. I'm in the middle of class, and I'm recording. So I uh, have a great one, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Uh, okay, bye. All right. So in this case, what you want to do is you want to upload. We did this last week. If you watch the video from last week, um, here's some samples. Here's my dog, and then what it does is it creates a sample like this out of the dog, right? So it's too big, obviously. And if you notice, there's maximum width is 80. You can go down to 40 characters. We click on the dog now. It's a little better, right? Still quite large. And the bigger the picture, the more complicated the image, the more crazy it is. And you can also make sm font size small. Here's the Mona Lisa. Let's check this out, right? So again, it looks like the Mona Lisa by using a bunch of X's and O's. And you can make it as uncomplicated as you want. Pick a picture that's small. Like, don't pick a big picture like these. These are massive pictures. So even if you make max width 40 characters, it's big. It's really big. Make it so that the, you know, the image is as small as you can. <laughs> It's got to be small. It's got to be like a little uh, postage stamp. It's got to maybe like, you know, 10, 20 characters wide, you know, just like I did with the dragons. Like I made it so that they're smaller. I pick smaller pictures. Like if you upload a, a picture up here and you can pick a picture of whatever you want and then you save it onto your desktop and upload it up here and then it'll convert it, right? So it's not difficult to do, but you have to do for every node, which is a pain in the ass. So that's why I'm giving you the bonus for it because it takes extra, extra work. All right, so that's one of the things you have to do. Um, so those are three possible uh, bonus, and there's others if you can think about things, right? You think about your own. If you make it a really cool story, if you had other things, you can do some colors like I did already. Remember I did colors too, right? So it's not just the text, but the colors for the text. 
um, I will give you bonuses for it. And actually, the colors and the there's a, there's examples of colors already in the dragon. Let's take a look at that. If you look at uh, node one, right here's the first node, which is the uh, um, I call it cave one, right? Cave one has not only um, is it got the picture, but on the bottom it says foreground color console dot foreground color is equal to system dot console color dot red, and that changes the console color <coughs> temporarily to red, and then I turn it back to white or black when I come back up here, right? Which is the basic color. So if you notice, the system dot console color always goes back to the original color when I go back up. All right, so. I want to make a new story, right? Because that's what we talked about. And I want to go from your approach to cave is dark and spooky and a large red dragon jumps out of you, blah, blah, blah. Well, a large red dragon is in the cave, but he's sleeping. A large red dragon, let's, let's, let's redo this thing. And I won't draw this, I won't do this dragon thing, right? So I'll take all this out for a second so you see, understand what I'm doing. So I don't have this as my cave, right? I'm going to redo my node. You approach the cave, it is dark and spooky. A large red dragon jumps out in front of you. He opens his jaws and blah, 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 right? Well, large red dragon, we'll say, is sleeping in front of you, right? And then this is the, the text, right? What do you do? So now I got to incorporate this menu again. Well, hold on. If I'm incorporating this menu again, I got to use a while loop, but I got to be smart about it. Because if I use a while loop in my menu, in my next possibility, because i got to make it so that you can, it'll keep asking you for the choice until you make the right choices. Choice one or choice two. If, we do, if you don't make the right choices, or if choice three will take you back up, right? If you make the wrong choice, then, or if you, if you don't do this, this while loop correctly, so what am I going to do? I'm going to take this while loop that I already have with this menu and copy it. Why would I do, why would I reinvent the wheel? Right? I already got this menu here. So when I go here, I always, I'm already do this console.clear, right? And if you notice, the menu starts off at this level, right? So see this line here? If I follow the line all the way down, right? So I need to get from this one all the way here to the top. I got to get all this, this part right all the way to where it starts the menu off. So if I go here, that's the whole spooky cave, right? If I just take the while loop, which is all I want, then this line here is all I want. So from here all the way down. To this this is the end of the menu so I'm gonna cut I'm gonna copy this out and I'm gonna go down here to this piece here where it says the approach to cave it is dark and spooky a large red dragon is sleeping in front of you I'm gonna move I'm gonna choose I'm gonna change this this text right here right because I'm not gonna use this text anymore right I'm gonna use something else and then it's this console reset color right so I'm gonna change the color back to normal right so it's not gonna show me it's gonna print out the text I'm not going to, uh, I can use a sleep, I don't mind sleeping, because sleep is basically waiting, make, making me wet, wait, so it gives me that wait, four prints out the picture, um, and then I'm going to print out my menu, so here's my while loop, so I'm going to put my while loop in place, and then he opens his jaws, instead of, um, you, I'll say this, I'll say, which way do you want to go, do you, you can climb over the dragon's tail, sneak around the dragon's tail, or um, you see, I'll say you see um, you see a, a path, another cave that's that, but the dragon's tail is in front of it or something. Right? Got to think about the what I'm going to say here, right? So I'll say this. I'll say you see you see a uh, tunnel uh, you see. Um, Maybe you see a lighted tunnel, light a lit, a lit tunnel, but it's blocked by the dragon's tail, right? And I'll say, and you you also see a dark tunnel. You also see a dark tunnel, right? So lighted tunnel, dark tunnel. Which way you want to go? Which tunnel do you take? Which tunnel? Right? Do you uh, do you take instead of going to? Do you take? So I'm changing the thing. So it's a story, right? All right. So do you take? And then I'll say instead of cave one and cave two, it's not going to be cave one and cave two. It's going to be uh, lit tunnel. And I'll say dragon's tail. <laughs> so I remind you, right? Or something like that. Lit tunnel. 
right? And then, sorry, lit tunnel, and I'm just, I'm just making so that the so it looks. So I keep my grid. That's why I'm doing that. And then dark tunnel. Lots of noise, eh? All right. So lit tunnel or dark tunnel. So if I do, if I do, and then three is give up. Okay, cool. So let's look at the selection. So now I have a selection not equal to three. Well, I don't have a selection in my cave, so I gotta I gotta add a little selection integer here. So I'm gonna say int selection. I'm gonna make that equal to zero, right? And I'm gonna say uh, console clear. This is what I'm gonna say here. I'm gonna reset my color to normal. I'm gonna print out my body text, which is this my new body text here, and this is my negative outcome. This is not negative outcome one anymore. This is not. It doesn't die here. He is. This is my second decision level, right? So second decision level, right? And I'll say this is cave one, cave one, right? So there's no there's no negative outcome yet, right? Okay, cool. Which way do you go? So I can go lit lit tunnel or dark tunnel. Go ahead. Okay. If I choose one, I'm gonna try use this try catch to say, hey. Take whatever I put in here and convert it, convert it from a, a string, whatever string I'm going to enter. To, to, I'm going to try and convert it to, to integer. If it works, then take me into the selection menu, right? Here's the selection menu. Now, instead of cave one and cave two, it's not cave one and cave two. Got to make some new nodes, right? Here we go. Let's make the new nodes. So here's tunnel one, right? Or we'll call this, instead of tunnel one and tunnel two, we'll say lit tunnel. We'll call the actual the method lit tunnel. We haven't made we haven't made it yet, but we will. Lit tunnel. There's the lit tunnel method, and this is where uh, player takes lit tunnel, uh, which is a, a, a cross dragon's tail. Okay. And now this the this is the next one. Uh, dark tunnel. Dark tunnel. Okay. We haven't defined the dark tunnel yet, but then. You know, and maybe uh, player takes player takes dark tunnel, right? So now I have to find these two tunnels, lit tunnel and dark tunnel, right? I don't have them yet, um, but I have to define them. Let's make them so that they're endpoints for now. So both are one, both are bad outcomes. Dark tunnel and lit, lit tunnel are both are bad outcomes. There's no good outcome here. All right. So I'm going to take cave two. As my as my template because both of it's a bad outcome and this would be like an endpoint right make sure it's correct I got it copy it I'm gonna copy it twice right so I go up and and let's rename them and but okay so this is instead of cave two cave two will be the first cave and the other ones will be the tunnels right so this will be a uh, lit tunnel right and this will be dark tunnel. All I'm doing is creating additional methods, right? Like tunnel and dark tunnel, but the lit tunnel is going to have its own text, right? Lit tunnel is going to say something like this, you know, you approach the lit, you uh, you jump over the dragon's ta tail because that's what you have to do, right? You jump across the dragon's tail and trip, <laughs> right? <laughs> what happens to you, right? Uh, you know, I'll say you fall, you fall, you fall in front of the dragon, and he doesn't give you his treasure, right? Maybe we'll say he gobbles you down, and oh, sorry, let me just undo that. I like that and, and he gobbles you down with one bite. Gobbles you down with one bite, whatever the new thing is, right? This is the jump, you jump across, the, and I, now I have to change this picture, it's not this. I'd have to use some kind of other picture that shows me it's like a, some teeth, right? You know, it's like you got eaten, right? Whatever, that's the change here, right? And then this one would be, um, and we'll just like take this picture out for now, this body text, you can put it back later. We'll put some other stuff in there. We have no body text right now, it's gonna be blank, right? Um, so I'll put in a note that says, you know, uh, insert interesting uh, body text here, 
right? So just to remind myself. And the same thing goes for up here, because when I come up here, instead of this stuff here, I don't have body text anymore, right? I don't have body text anymore, so I'm not printing that out. I'm going to the next level. So this console foreground color, blah, 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 red, and this right body text and wait for key, I don't need that anymore because uh, the only thing I'm waiting for is once this person enters my uh, my thing, I'm not waiting for key anymore. I'm, re I'm returning back to where I came from. Let me take that out and I'll show you what I'm talking about in a bit. Oh, I love it when I make so many mistakes, man. It's amazing. Okay, good. So that's that. So I've taken this out. So now if you notice, it's just a decision level. That's all this is. And this is my intro text, but I don't have an intro text. Uh, um, I got my body text, but I don't have my intro text um, uh, variable here to show this. So what I want to do is instead of this being body text, this has got to be intro text because now this is my intro to my new node, right? So this has got to be here. And I'm just going to just be, be, oops, just, when I'm recording this, you can see what I'm doing, right? So, control, it's supposed to be control V, <coughs> but you know me, I'm just being unlucky. So instead of console dot right line uh, body text, or to intro text, I'm going to do it already, right? So I don't have to do this here, because I've already done it up here. But I want, actually, let's go back. I want, I don't want to do it here. Right? I want to do it in here. I want, I want the menu to come up. Right? So I want to reset my color and I want it to become every time I come to back to this tunnel, it's got to say the same thing. Right? Again, I'm just, I'm just modifying. You have to test the stuff to see how it works. Right? So one, you're going to do one node at a time. Test it out. I'm doing this first node. Okay, incorrect. So I get the lit tunnel or dark tunnel. And then this is my void, my cave two, because cave two is the positive outcome. I'm going to keep that. And here's my first lit tunnel with an, it's a negative, it's not a negative outcome yet. Oh yeah, this is a negative outcome, yeah. So it's a, uh, I'll say this is a negative outcome, negative outcome. And I only did two decision levels, I didn't go to three. Negative outcome one, player dies, whatever. And then I'll do the same thing, another negative outcome, we'll do another one. There's only, there's one positive and two negatives now, right? Okay, so he's going across the dark tunnel. So you go into the dark tunnel. You you, uh, I'll say you uh, bravely right, go into the dark tunnel, right? Um, you slip <laughs> on on some uh, <clears throat> watery rocks. Right, Roddy rocks and you fall to your death. Right? No, that's what happens. You go in the dark tunnel, you slip and fall to your death. Right? Fall to your death. Okay. So now, again, I got to put in some, in here, I got to put in some interesting body text. I'm going to just take all this stuff out and say something like this insert. To, my, to myself, interesting body type, interesting uh, body text art here. Okay, now I got to fix this up. So I got a foreground color of green. I don't have a body text to show right now. It's going to be empty, but that's okay. And then I'm, I'm going to wait for my key, and it's going to say, "Hey, click everything to continue." Right? Let's see what happens when I do this now. So I added another decision level. So my decision node goes from tunnel. So it goes up here. So here's my first one: cave one, cave two. I go down to if I take if I go to cave one, right? I go here, right? Here's my here's my node. And now I can go to my lit tunnel or dark tunnel. If I go to my lit tunnel, I go down here. And if I go to my dark tunnel, I go down here. Each of them each of these things is a method. And it's a method within a method within a method. It's gonna keep going down, down, down until I get to the positive outcome or negative outcome. Let's run this thing and see if I can make some mistakes. Okay, so you are on a planet full of dragons. In front of you, you see two caves. In one cave, the dragon is friendly and will eat and share his treasure with you. In the other cave, is greedy and hungry and will eat you on sight. No. Oh, that's so that's got to change, right? Because that's not right anymore, right? But let's leave it alone for now. Let's say we've made some other things. One dragon, there's, you know, you're in a planet full of dragons and, um, you know, be careful of your choices. One of the paths takes you into a dragon that eats you on sight. 
you know, the other, the other path might take you to a place where you need some, you know, you, you gain the treasure and get out a hero, whatever. We'll redo the text, right? And then so I say I go cave one. Okay, well, it doesn't take me anywhere, right? Because it says, look, it says, you, Tom, you approach the cave. It is dark and spooky. A large red dragon is sleeping in the front of you. You see a lit tunnel, but it's blocked by the dragon's tail. You also see a dark tunnel. Which tunnel do you take? Lit tunnel, dark tunnel, okay? The timer. It's the timer. I have to fix the timer. So I says, please make your selection one. You jump across the dragon's tail and trip. You fall in front of the dragon and something happens, right? He gobbles you down with one bite. So this would be red text again. Shit. If I go, and now it goes. Now, and see, what, see where it went? It went back to here, right? This is wrong. It shouldn't take me back to my lit tunnel or dark tunnel. It should take me all the way back up. So what does that mean? So if I go, if I go to uh, to back up, how does this path work? Well, let's go back. Let's trace this path, right? And this is where it gets complex, right? So here's my while loop, right? And here's the sleep. That's why I didn't. It took me down here, right? But it says you see a lit tunnel, but it's blocked by the dragon's tail, blah blah. And the other thing is it's console not clear, so it goes to the top of the screen, right? So it clears the screen. You approach the cave, it is dark and spooky, a large red dragon is sleeping in front of you, you see da 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 da, right? Take this away, the sleeping thread, we'll get this rid of this. Which way do you take? Okay, so we're gonna go down to a tunnel, lit tunnel. Okay, so now I made a selection one, I go to my lit tunnel. I go to my lit tunnel. So this is where I'm leaving from, from line 130. I gotta return back to line 130. Okay, how do I do that? Well, I leave, I went to, I go to lit tunnel. Okay, here's my lit tunnel, right? So it says, da 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 whatever, all this kind of stuff. And what I need to do is, when I come back out of the lit tunnel, right, I got to make it so that my choice is three. My choice says, instead of it being, when I come back in here, right, my selection, this selection, turns into three. So I can break out of my loop somehow, which means... For me to do that, I've got to return something from lit tunnel. If I get, if I leave, leave, leave my lit tunnel, my next thing I do, I either can return it, my next thing I do is my selection is equal to three. Because these two choices, my friends, are bad choices. If I ever come back here, no matter what happens. So if I do that, if I go like this, watch, if I say selection, right, is now equal to three, I'm breaking out. Same thing with my dark tunnel. Selection is going to be equal to 3. I can't go ever back here again. Selection is equal to 3. Because why? I'm saying 3 means that I'm going to go back here. It's going to check to see with my selection. If it's 1 or 2, I'm going to do this. If not, we're going to, we're going to exit the environment. This isn't right actually either. This exit the environment means we're going to quit. I don't want to quit here. I don't want to exit the program. I want to go back and start over. Right? So I'm just going to do one of these and just get, get rid of this one from my, my tunnel. Because I never tried that yet. Okay, so that's one. The other thing is that <coughs> when I go into my lit tunnel, it says you jump across the dragon's back, blah, 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 blah. This is where I want to clear my screen again, when I choose my, make my choice. So I want to do, hold on, I want to do a console.clear, right? So I want to clear the console there, and then shows this. You, you jump across the dragon's tail and trip. You fall and blah, 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 and then it resets the color to normal and body text. Hold on a second. And then I don't want this to be green. I want it to be red because it's been negative outcome. And so is this. Red outcomes are negative. I, my, my, my world, green outcomes is positive. I only have one green, green outcome. And, and you know what? I also want to clear the screen here because I did it over there. Console.clear. And yes, what are you going to say? There's also, is there a sleep? There's sleep here before my picture. I don't have a picture yet. That's why I put the sleep in there. Okay. Yeah, another thing is, so you may go back to selection three up there. Yeah, so what happens is if I go to selection three, what happens? Well, it's checking to see, my switch statement is checking the selection. If it's three, what happens? Nothing. It doesn't do anything. It doesn't go anywhere, right? So what happens is, but selection three is a valid selection. It doesn't go default and say it's an invalid selection. It doesn't do that. It goes back up to selection three, and if it checks to see if it's selection three, then it exits the while loop. And if it exits the while loop, it comes to here, console.clear, and it finishes off my, my method, which means it should take me right back up to where I called it up here into cave one and cave two, right? Which way you want to go, cave one and cave two is what it's going to say, right? 
So it's which one you want to go, cave one or cave two? Right? And we know, if I want to exit out of here, this is where it should take me, back to here. You're on a planet full of dragons, da 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 cave one or cave two. That's where I want to go back. Let's try this out and see if it works. Watch. So here's plan which cave you go into, cave one, right? So you clear the screen this time, right? Now you approach the cave. It is dark and spooky. Maybe I can put in a sleep in there, right? So approach the cave, sleep. It is dark and spooky, sleep, you know, blah, 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 right? I can do that too. So let's, let's exit out of there and try that. So I can make it as, as interesting by adding sleeps in there as I want, right? So here is you approach the cave. It is dark and spooky. I'm going to make it so that um, you approach the cave with his own line. Here's my intro text. Bear with me here while I show you how to do this, right? And say, I'll just make it like this. I'll say, it is dark and spooky. I won't, I won't go to the next line. Because right? you can make it so, remember, it only, it only goes to the next line after the backslash n, right? So you approach the cave, right? And before, before I, uh, I print this out, I'm going to go intro text. I'm going to do a console, a console.write, right? Instead of a, a console.write line, it'll be intro text. So I can do that here, right? And then I'll say uh, that that thread sleep stuff, which is what I want to do. Which, if I want, I'm not going to redo the. I'm going to reinvent the wheel. I'm just going to take thread sleep and put it back up here. Bear with me while, while you see what the effect is going to be, right? Instead of five thousand, that's five five thousand milliseconds. Is five seconds? Is a thousand milliseconds? But that's too long. So I'm going to cut this down to you approach the cave, beat. It is dark and spooky beat, and then da 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 So let's try this out. So beat would be like 600 milliseconds, right? So you approach the cave, beat is dark and spooky, and then let's see how this works. I'll do another one, right? So I'll do another one of these to add. I can add as much of, uh, as much, um, what, what, do I want, what do I want to say? Because um, uh, it won't, it won't, the other text won't appear until the sleep is done, right? A large dragon is sleeping in front of you. You see a lit tunnel and it's da 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 da, right? Reset color. Let's try this out. You don't do plus equal? I, not with the intro text. Once I press, once I do the intro text here, I say I set the intro text to this and then I print it out. I set the intro text to this and I print it out. If I, I do this, right, um, where I would have to do it the first one. Equal. And then, yeah. you add and then I add, right? Because that makes this, this is the, that resets my text. All right, right, right. right? To, so my string. Right, I reset my string to this new one and then add to it. That's all I'm doing. Okay, let's try this out. So if I did it right, then you'll see it's going to be a little bit more dramatic now. Okay, so you're on a planet full of dragons, in front of you, blah, 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 cave one. Okay, you approach the cave, it's dark and spooky. That went a little bit too fast for me. See how there's a bit of a break? So I think I need a little bit more sleep time than, than this. Let's add, uh, let's say 1,500, because that makes a, minute, a second and a half before it goes you know, to the next level. And maybe even a second and a half is too fast. Let's try this out. So this, is, this is where you have fun. Torture cave. It is dark and spooky. A large dragon drags up in front of you and blah, blah, blah. Which way do you go? I want to go to my lid tunnel. Okay, cool. You jump across the cave. Dragon's in trip. You fall in front of the dragon and he gobbles you down with one, one bite. Right? Is that a <laughs> now see what it says here? You jump across the dragon's thing and it says it again. Right? So there's an error here. There's an error in my code because it's doing the same text again. It should only do it once in, and, and the red part should be my body text. And hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So let's go back and fix that. So here's my where we are. So we're saying let's let's trace it. So here's my body text. You jump across the dragon's tail and trip and blah. You can put some sleep in there too, right? Uh, so they can slow this down so it's more dramatic, right? And then it says, here's my, uh, you gobbled you down with one bite, and that's the end. And then this is the picture. So this not, is not body text. This should be intro text. Again, so I should make a new variable up here. We'll call this string intro text. And the body text will be the drag. Intro text equal to the. And I'll change this to intro text. Watch me. So that won't mess me up. I'll do this. And then this is a, oops. And this is the, um, I print out this intro text, and then now it's waiting for body text, as an example, and I messed up here. So, okay. And then the body text is going to be whatever the right. interesting picture is going to be. I don't have that yet, so it's not going to print it out. It's not going to show anything, so that's going to fix that problem. 
And I got to do the same thing over here. So, and, and you know what? Sometimes it's better to just do one node, one node at a time, because it's not going to crap out. Make your the, the, the things empty and then copy and paste, right? Okay, so here, so I've got this. And I'll do the same thing with uh, these, this line here. So I'll just copy this line because you can. I can use the same, the same variable because the variable scope lives and dies inside of the method. It won't. It doesn't clash. They can be the. They can be the exact same. Uh, what we call variable scope, right? It's not going to be an issue. Okay. Console dot clear. Da da da. This all looks good. Five thousand. Uh, this is going to go red. And now this has got to change because it's not uh, in, uh, body text. It's intro text. So let's just fix this up. Let's just fix this up, like I said. All right, and when we're done, now let's try this again one more time. Did I? Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Take care, Tom. Let me know, okay? Yeah. We'll find out. You know what? You can If you ask uh, Ilya, if you ever say Ilya, talk to him. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Yeah. They'll find you. They'll find you. No so problem. I guess I have to get some time. Yeah, that's all you okay. need to do. All right, see ya. All right, so if I run this thing, let's try it now. And by the way, just to make it a little bit more friendly, because we, we're starting this off as a new project, uh, just so that it remembers my choices. I'm going to get my, my screen background color to white and my screen text to black. I'm also going to choose my font size yeah, as okay. as 16. No, it's not a default because it's, it's be yeah, well, it's just for the first time that I do my project, then it's going to remember, right? Okay, so here's your planet full of dragons, and again, I can put in some some sleep in there too, so that way between the lines, it does, I have to read it. Now, you don't make it too annoying, because if you make it every single bloody line, it's like, come on, I don't want to wait, right? It's got to be somewhat speedy, right? Because I have to look at your story, so it's going to be like, drive me crazy if I have to go sleep, 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 just not, you know. So let's go uh, cave one. You approach the cave. It is dark and spooky. A large red dragon is sleeping in front of you. You see a lit tunnel, but it's blocked by the dragon's tail. You also see a dark tunnel. Which tunnel do you take? I'm going to say lit tunnel. And then it says you jump in the dragon's tail and trip. You fall in front of the dragon, and he gobbles you down with one bite. Start over. Red, red outcome, right? And now it says this. It says you are in front of planet full of dragons again. Now if I choose option three... I end, I end the program. So it goes all the way back up to the top. See what I did? And I did that by the choices I made because I made selection three take me out of the loop and back out into the other one. So remember, because it cascades back from the calling, whatever invoked that method, it keeps going back, back, back. And this is the, this is the lesson here, guys. The lesson isn't about making a game. The lesson is about methods and how methods all work and how they link together and how loops one run from one method to the other. And how you can traverse methods, almost like different nodes in the list. Okay, so this is the whole idea here. Now, if I take the other way, I took I took one way. I took the uh, the cave, and if you don't see how long it took to do all this, right? because I changed my color to re I said reset color, right? Which I, I could I don't have to do. Uh, I said I went to the dark tunnel this time. Okay, so dark tunnel. You bravely go into the dark tunnel, and slip in watery rocks, and you fall to your death, right? And then I have some other pictures. Start over. So I've got two negative outcomes I just showed you, and here's my positive outcome. You approach the cave, it is bright and cheerful light. Well, and I gotta fix this because it comes underneath here. I want to put it up the top, and here's my treasure, right? So which means my treasure, which is my positive outcome, which is this. When I get here, I want to clear the screen. So this is where I go console dot clear, right? And I'm gonna clear the screen up. And now let's try that, that positive outcome again. So I go to cave two, clears the screen. Maybe I'll add some sleep in there to make it nice, and then I have my treasure right here. Right? Make sense? So positive outcome green, negative outcome red. This is my in my world. In your world, it might be something else. Right? Maybe you'll make uh, different colors throughout the thing. You make everything black, and yellow will mean you're on a bark, you're on a dark path. <laughs> you know, like be careful. Warning. Yeah. Yeah, so that means you have to tell me, like, if you make this background, if you assign this white, yeah. you can change the, I think this is, I, I chose the foreground, right? 
So if you look, look, let's let's look at the, the, the color here. If you really want to control everything, you can. Because right now the foreground color is this. So if I want to change my color to whatever, let's say I want to make my foreground color or my background color, I want to make it some other color, like pink. Let's choose that, right? Seriously. So here in this, this first tunnel, I want to make my foreground color change before I print out my, my right line. If you notice here, the pattern for doing this foreground color is console dot whatever the color is, and then a system dot console color dot whatever. So and that's that is look at what happens before I do a right line. So I got to do the same thing up here. So before I do this right line, I want to change the background color so it's pink, right? Let's try it. So before I do this first right line, so I'm going to go console dot background color instead of foreground color, right? Is equal to uh, uh, I think it's what is it again? Console the system color. I can't remember. It is system dot console color. No, system dot console color dot, and I'll say if I can type pink, it's there. If it's not, it'll be some other color, like uh, uh, maybe it'll be dot cyan. Sure, we'll do that weird color cyan. So it'll be like kind of almost like a greenish uh, color, and then I'll do a console dot foreground color. You can do both, right? Is system dot uh, console color dot black. Oops. So you can control everything and then it'll be exactly what you say. Okay, to answer your question mark. So if you want to control everything, don't leave it to chance. Don't make me change the colors like I'm doing. You change my, my, my thing to make it look. Let's see how this works. So it's going to be that weird color and whatever and it didn't work. Let's try this out. So I'm, oh yeah, because you know why? I reset the colors. My I did my own colors. That's why I didn't do the background color. See, if I choose like one, approach the cave is dark and spooky, blah, blah, blah. That's what I really get. That's how it should look because it's resetting back to what it should be, right? So if I want to reset back to my defaults, I go defaults, right? And let me just go back and start over again. No, let's go to <laughs> properties. Uh, I want to go to my default colors. So I know that um, in here my background is my system color. I changed this up now, so I messed it up. But you can go back to, uh, to defaults again and choose your default colors. And I think you can do that by going, yeah, 812. Yeah, see how it's doing this? Raster fonts, colors, right? Changing it back, screen text. To this, right? Press OK. Yeah, it doesn't do it because I'm already in it. Right, so, but that, those are the those are the defaults. So I can actually go and change them physically. I wonder if I can ex just accept those. So if I go like click physically in there. So I think it's this one for screen background, which is black. Right? See, I have to click it. And screen text hold on, is this one, right? And then now if I go to font, it's this one. I click it and this one, press OK, and it doesn't color it, change it. I don't know what's happening. No, it won't, it won't. It's not that's not the point. It should change it right away. But now that I've changed it, I messed it up. So for you guys, I won't change it. How about that? I won't change your background. Whatever is, don't change your background, do it programmatically. And then when you do one of these, right, then when it'll give you the, the proper colors when it prints out like this. That's so it actually changed the background color to make it all like this. Lit tunnel. See, there's the, there's the color that I'm looking for. Look, doubles you down, da, 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 and then it's gonna be red, right? That's because I changed the colors to whatever I want. But I'm saying you can change the color so you can make it whatever you want, right? So instead of me changing the color to what it was, so let me change the colors. Let me do this thing again. I'll do manually changing the colors back to black. So I go like this. I want this my properties to be uh, my colors. I want a black screen. And my screen text is going to be this color, right? Which makes more sense. I won't change my font. Oh my! So there it is. Okay, now that I've done this, it's not it's not colors again. It's not it's not your colors. It's my colors because I made it black. <laughs> Once you've changed it, it's changed. It's bad. Right? Going back to console console defaults. Even if I go defaults like this, it doesn't change it back. 
Anyways, you get the idea. The idea here is that once we once we have these choices, and again, if I was to draw this out for you, and we'll end off here today. Okay, we'll stop after this. You guys can go early today. So you did a couple tests. You know, did all this crazy stuff. You know, made you crazy, and we did a recording. Huh? I'll talk about what I'm for a little bit with you guys too, sure. Uh, but after this, you don't have to stay. Is what I'm saying. Um, like I don't have to go. I'm I'm, gonna, I'm releasing you to, to to leave early if you want to. Right. All right. So let's go into and draw this out a little bit for ourselves. Right. So again, remember we did these nodes. Right. Now you can do nodes. Think about nodes in different ways. Right. So if I want to create a new di diagram, let's do a new diagram for ourselves. Right. So think about this. We do our first node. Right. Each node, then, um, is a, um, what we're doing, I'm just going to choose the right thing here, is, not that one, oh, this one, sorry, this this one. Eat, let's, say, let's say each node, we'll make it a bubble, so make it a real, like an ellipse, okay? So here's our node. Actually, you know what? Yeah, that's fine. So if I, if I look at, my first node, this is my first node, and then I go, I have a couple of nodes, so I'm going to draw these nodes out. Actually, you know what, I'll just copy and paste. So I'll go like this, I'll say copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste. These are all the nodes, right? So you've got a bunch of these nodes, and they're connected by a path, right? What if I do like this is one, two, three decision levels. Now you now these nodes. So how many nodes do I have here? I have my first method, right? And this method isn't coming isn't, isn't really my first method. If you think about these, if all the, all these are different methods, that's why I'm recording this for you guys to understand, right? I really have one more, right? And this is my main method. My main method calls my first method. So I do one of these, right? So here's my main method calling my first method. My first method has two choices, this way as an example, or this way. So these are my two methods. So this is my second method. And here's another method that goes this way or this way. I'm just drawing this out the same way, right? Now here's another thing. I have a couple of, now here's outcomes. These are outcomes here. So there, there's actually no methods to go to. These are different methods down here too, right? So I got to draw these outcomes, right? Even though these aren't nodes anymore, these are just the endpoints. Or maybe I'm going to use the endpoints instead of drawing circles, I'm going to make the endpoints a different, a different uh, um, shape, like I'll make it some other kind of weird polygon, right? So let's go polygon shape, like this. Now let's make it like this, okay? So I'll make that, and I'll copy and paste that. So just so we know, it's the, it's the end shape. Right? So here's the end shape. It's pretty big, right? Sorry, I copied the wrong one. I took the wrong one. Right? So here's all the end shapes. The end shapes tell you. The end shapes tell you. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna fix this in a second. Don't worry. Adobe. No, it's just me. It's, it's not. It's not Adobe. It's Tom. <laughs> Tom. Yeah, it's Tom. It's Tom problem. So I'm just doing this randomly. But the idea is that you have these are the actual methods, right? These are methods too, right? Because they give you the outcomes. Now you could. Instead of making these all methods in the bottom, you could make this part of the other method because all I'm doing is just printing out the end, right, and going barreling up again. All that's it, you could make it work like that, right? But these are all methods. So look at all the methods you're writing. You're writing, you you got this one, and I've given you these two, right? That's all you have right now, and you're writing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve more methods. That's what you're writing. Seven of these things here are negative outcomes, so all these ones would be red. If I was going to draw this out properly, so change the color to I don't know, red, if that makes sense. And only one of them is going to be green, so let's change this color to green. So it's not kind of a green color, right? And let's make them smaller because they're just too darn large. So we'll just like you know, go modify, transform, scale. And we'll just make them so that the scale goes smaller by a lot. And now we'll whoop. <laughs> we'll do that again. We'll modify. We're playing now. We're playing, right? We'll scale, and we'll scale this down, and we'll we'll turn it the other way. 
and now we'll turn it this way a little bit. That's it. Okay, and we'll click away. Okay, so if you notice these ones, here's these are the methods, right? You can choose individual ones, right? There's this one, this one. This is easy. Right, but the idea here is, this is what I want to show you. The idea here is these are all the negative outcomes, this one positive outcome, and then obviously this would be the path to get here. So if I wanted to do this, just to, to show you the path, this is the positive path. I'm just going to kind of click on all these ones, and I'll change this all to green too. Right? That's the positive path, right? The, all these other paths are negative paths, no matter what happens. No matter what I choose here, this whole path here is negative. And the way to show that would be, to make all this red, just like I did in my diagram originally. So when you plan stuff, some of the good things to do here is to physically plan all your, your story points ahead of time. And then so you know what it's going to look like. You know what your story is going to be like. Don't randomly do things like how I did. Actually write your storylines out in a Word document somewhere or a text document. because That's more efficient than doing what I did, right? These are all negative outcomes. So this whole tree here, this whole thing is negative. No matter what he chooses here, he's dead. And there is no positive possibility here. Now, sometimes this is the thing that I told you about. You can do one of these, right? Where you can go one here like this. What if you do one of those? You can do that. What if you do one of these? Right? Could you do that? Yeah, you could. You could also do you, you could also do one of these. Well, no, that's not positive outcomes. These are uh, taking you back out to the to the path of positive outcomes. You can do as many of these. Look at so this node here is a special node that has one, two. This, so there's in this in this room, this room here has one, two, three, four, five, six doors. You go, you come into a room with six doors. You just came into a room. You, that's what I was asking. Yeah, and then into a room with six doors. You know, uh, which way do you go? Kind of thing, right? And in here, if there's a door that comes in here, there's a couple possibilities here. You can make it so that the door is two-way, or you can make it so that the door is one-way. Okay, be very careful when you do this kind of thing. How do you exit to come back up here and exit, exit out of the path? Yes, that's what I'm telling you. So I'm doing right here. Draw it out, man. What I'm doing right here is what you need to do. To figure in your mind, before you do what you're going to do, start doing your story. Before you code a darn thing, plan out your stuff. I'm not asking you from an external document, but you know what? If you include a little diagram like this for yourself, I'll give you a bonus point. Just a diagram. I don't care about the document. Your diagram to show me what you've done. Here's the positive. I maybe label them. Positive outcome, positive outcome, or uh, negative outcome, negative outcome. This is what happens. Door room. This would be, so in other words, I would have to label this. This would be the initial place that I start off. This is my main method. So if I was going to make, make it, you know, mention it, I would just say main. You could, but I'd prefer if you did something like this so I can actually see it. Pencil on paper, what are you going to take a picture of it? No, I don't know. I just like, right. I like brainstorm or pencil. Paper. Well, fine. Then take a picture of it. All Give right. it to me in picture form, right? At least, at least it makes sense. And then this would be, you know, uh, what's what we call initial Initial cave. Initial cave. Right? Here's my initial cave. And then this initial cave here, which you would have to somehow, you can make it bigger, you can draw this out the way you like. All right? Initial cave, and what do you do? Well, drawing this out by yourself is really tedious, right? But maybe there's some tools to help us out. So how do we do this? First of all, I'm going to just kill this whole thing. This is sort of like a wire thing for what? Yes, thank you very much. This is exactly what we're doing. But what you can do is there is a tool that's online, and this is where we'll end. I'm going to go to Web Tools, and I'm going to go to Mind Map. Just come with me to Mind Map here. There's two options. There's one called Bubble.us, right? So Bubble.us. And if I go Start Brainstorming, right, it gives me this. Start here. Um, and if you notice, I can do, um, I can add a little link that's the same level. And I can also go back here and add a link that's below it. Right here, I'll go and add another link, and I can add another link that's below it. And I can also get rid of this link by uh, deleting, so I can delete this whole thing. Right, so if I don't want it, I can just delete it. So I click onto it and delete. You can also move it around. Right, if you hover over it, you can delete the link. Right, and this is just an online tool. You can also move these over so you can make them as you know, friendly as you want. And then finally, you can print it out. 
So this is actually online tools, bubble.us to help you make your diagram. Important to make your brainstorming first before you do any line of code. Because if you do your line of code after, then you're going to totally mess yourself up. Don't map this afterwards. Map this first and do your code according to the map, not the other way around. Okay? So this is one little code, one little program. If you don't like this, you can also go, there's one more I'll give you, because there's a couple different ones. Uh, there's one called um, uh, Mind Mapping. It's called MindMeister. If I go, if I just click Get Started, MindMeister.com. Now, you, there's also free trial and all this kind of stuff you can get into, right? If you go free trial, I think I have an account where I can log in to my uh, to uh, to log in and stuff like this, right? And let's go back out to the other one. Now, if I go sign in, because I've already signed up, I think my username is that, and then it's I'm guessing if I'm right. Let's see, yeah. And um, as an example, I can do a new mind map. I can pick one that's already exists, like almost like a little pattern. I go blank, right? And when I do blank, it generates the same idea, but this time you have all kinds of colors on the right-hand side here. And, um, you know, there's all kinds of things you can, so same idea, you, you can mess with this thing. You can pull it around. You can make your mind map whatever you want. You can pull in an additional, uh, you know, link. Here's your link now. The links are a little bit different, right? So I go here. So let's say this is my, my initial place, and this is like, you know, initial cave. So you can actually draw this thing out. And then from there, here's my initial little cave plus, and now, you know, here's my uh, left cave, right? And I'll do plus. And from here, it'll continue, right? But I can go back to this one and go plus, and then here's my right cave. Remember, it doesn't have to be the way I drew it. You can do it this way. And, can, and I can actually pull this whole thing down and then from here, I can also move these around to make them whatever I like, to draw them out the way I like, right? And then from there, right? I mean, again, same idea. And then from here, from my right, my right cave, I can go plus, and I'll, I'll say uh, jump dragon's tail, right? And I'll say lit tunnel. Now again, you gotta put, you gotta kind of code it properly, right? And here. I'll go plus, and you'll I'll say uh, dark tunnel, right? So here I'm going to put this these underneath here. And if you notice the dark tunnel actually leads back to here, right? Because see how the, how it connects back to this. Well, I want to make it so it's part of this and part of this, right? But if I take it out, I can also move move it away from this and put it over here to my main. See? You can make as many of these as you want. So now I've got these. And let's say for my lid tunnel, I'm going to do another one. I'm going to keep going, keep going, keep going. So this is a free one. These two ones I show you, Bubble.us and MindMeister, a couple free. They're called mind mapping tools, right? Really, really cool. If you're a Mac user or if you like to use um, a tool that's kind of a paid-for tool, um, see which one it's called, there are a couple different tools uh, that are very, very popular uh, that are out there. I want to make sure I give you the right one. Um, because I don't want to mess you up. If I tell you one, and then you're going to get the, the as I have it here, and I occasionally use it as well for mind mapping. And it's probably staring me right in the face. So I have mo balsamic mockups, which is one, right? That's kind of making actual wireframes. That's what that does. Doodle Desk is actually a Doodle uh, program that I can do, but there's actually MindNode Pro. This is the one I want to show you. MindNode Pro. Um, as an example, and I can say new document, okay, and guess what I got here? This is a native app for the Mac, which I highly recommend. So here again, we go inner cave, or sorry, uh, initial cave. This is an app now. It's not, it's not online, right? And then from there, I go plus, nice little colors, right? And then I go, you know, left cave, and I'll go here, plus, right cave. See how beautiful it is? And then from my left cave and right cave, I can move these totally around the way I want. Left cave and right cave, whatever I want them. Maybe it's this way, sorry. Right, to make them right. And then from here, I can go plus. And this, this plus will be, uh, you know, again, the right cave will be uh, lit tunnel to make it easy. And then I'll go here, plus, right, dark tunnel. See how there's a whole uh, blue area here. And then again, I can move these so that they're underneath here or move them around. You also can choose um, 
different ways of connecting and folding, right? I can fold it in and unfold it, right? Uh, so there's different ways of presenting these two things, and I keep going, keep going until you 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 come up with a what we call a mind map. And there's different ways to present this thing. Uh, you can choose different colors. If I go back and I can change, I can choose the color of a path. You know, I can choose this color. Go to yellow. You know, as an example, choose the yellow color. Right. And and so on. I can do do a new sibling, a new child. I can insert a new parent. I can create a connection. Like I can do another another connection. Let's say between here and the left cave to make another weird connection. Watch. So this this is also a connection to here, right? We do some kind of weird connection, right? Yeah, like th there's some really cool um, mapping software that you can use. And the reason why we do this is because when you map, it doesn't matter whether you map um, websites like this. So websites, this is, this is like making our site map, if you will, right? Or whether you're mapping a game, a heuristic map, or a decision tree. So imagine now you have an enemy, and this isn't this this decision I'm making is like a brain of the enemy. He does this if this happens. He does this if this happens. If you do this, then he does this. If you do this, then he does this. If you do this, then he does this. It almost like plays out a game for you, and then brings you back to the beginning. If you reset, reset. If he's an idle, if he's in an idle state, he goes back to the idle state. Now I'm watching. Well, I see the enemy. Okay, if I see you cross my path, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start climbing, following you. If you keep, if you're still within still the same distance, I'm gonna fire at you. If you go over here and you try and hide, I'm gonna do this to you. So I'm gonna create my AI, which is what you're doing. You're creating an AI map, a heuristic map is what it's called, or a decision tree matrix, whatever you want to look at it, but you need to map it out. If you don't map it out, you might have mixed results, right? I'm not gonna make you map it out. I'm asking you if you do it, I'll give you a bonus. Right? So I'm going to try and give you incentive to do it instead of making it required. Questions around this stuff. I know it's a lot that I talked about today, and it's the biggest project you have so far. So we're 10%, and it's more complicated than an array in some ways because of how everything bubbles back up to the main thing. It's got to all bubble back, which means it requires testing. Don't try and bite off more than you can chew, which means don't write the entire thing and write all the nodes at once. Right, one piece at a time. Fix it. Go to the next piece. Fix that. So if you go down a couple of decision levels, fix each one your each path you're writing. So do do this, this, this as an example. This, this, and these two. Like do this half first. And then when this is half is done is working, like I've almost got this working like this. I'm going here and I've got these two right now. Right? And then I go from I can do this one. I can go from here and I go do these two. And then from here I can do these these two bad bad uh, choices as an example. That's what I want to do. I don't want to do all this and try and troubleshoot. It's too much. You'll run into errors and you won't, you'll, you'll be frustrated and you'll want to start over and it'll be a waste of your time. Don't do that. Label each of these nodes something that makes sense, like dark tunnel, lit tunnel, um, you know, dark cave, light cave, uh, swimming pool, you know, uh, whirlpool of death, you know, time travel, you know, tunnel, matter transmitter, you know, and, and again, this is not including special weapons you can pick up and other choices, right? Or armor or, 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 or you know, maybe in order for him to get, to get to this positive outcome, even if he goes here, he needs to be fully armored. And if he doesn't do that, maybe somewhere up the line, he needs to pick up, here, do you pick up a weapon? Yes, okay, now can you do right, right or left? You can choose no. I don't pick up a weapon, right? So maybe the other choice would be, hey, at any time, press zero to pick up the weapon on the floor, or press five to press the weapon on the floor. Okay, fine. Which you've got the weapon. It's going to show the weapon now. Every time you have, because you press five, when your menu comes up, if the weapon is chosen, you show my inventory weapon is, you know, green. It's positive. Right. So there's different ways, different if, if statements you can use to make it so that you know you show that you have an inventory. You can actually show your inventory at the bottom of your screen all the time if you want, because you control how your screen prints out. Questions. You can make it as complex or as simple as possible. If you don't have a lot of time, because you've had a lot of a lot of other courses, just do this. Don't do more. You have two weeks to do this by week thirteen, so two and a half weeks roughly, to do all this work. Right? Remember, near that time there's gonna be a crunch. 
I could have made it do by week 14, but I'm guaranteeing you week 14, the last week, lots of stuff to do. This way, this is done beforehand. It's worth 10% of your mark. And then after this, there's 35% left for your final exam. Now, what are we going to do for the final exam, you're going to ask? Well, we're probably going to do a bit of both. It's going to be a bit of practical. We actually do something, like build something at the end. Right? Plus a little bit of, I don't know if there's going to be multiple choice or if it, maybe it's going to be all practical. I don't know yet. But definitely on the exam, expect methods. Expect random numbers. Expect all the things you've been covering so far up to this point. You should be able to handle any of those things. Right? Loops, decisions, uh, different data, arrays. The whole thing can be on the exam. Right? So anything we've covered up to this point. And it'll be something you have to build within a couple hours. I won't make the exam four freaking hours. It'll be crazy. I'll die. Never mind you guys, right? Questions around this? Okay, that's it for today. And if anyone has any problems, we'll get together.